As part of the UNEP Plus Science Series, we reviewed five European Research Council laureates at TEDx Brussels. Each laureate was funded by the ERC, which is the first European funding organization for excellent frontier research. Every year, it selects and funds the best creative researchers to run five-year projects. The ERC has funded more than 4,500 top researchers at a variety of stages in their careers under Europe's new research and innovation program, Horizon 2020. I spoke with the ERC's Head of Communication, Massimo Godina. Massimo, what does the ERC do? The ERC is called the, Europe, the Champions League of European Science. It is an organization funding the best researchers from all over the world to stay or to come back to Europe to do research at the frontier of knowledge, so basic or applied research. 13 billion euros is the budget of the organization for the seven years uh, length of the program, which is part of uh, Horizon 2020 program. And uh, we have annual competitions where all the best scientists compete, so the best of the best get the grant. They are assessed by uh, international high-level panels with scientists from, again, all over the world. So really, who uh, pass the selection, who gets the grant, a uh, very substantial grant, they are really the, the best scientists that can uh, move the, the borders of knowledge and, uh, and advance uh, science in, uh, in Europe. Why should we spend so much money on this kind of research at this moment of uh, austerity in Europe? Well, first of all, we need to invest a lot on, on researchers themselves because there are too many talents, too many great uh, brains that uh, risk to leave Europe or to leave research because they don't find the good funding opportunities in Europe. And the ERC is a great uh, uh, new and young instrument which is a new opportunity to get uh, big funding, uh, 1.5 million euros for a young researcher for five years. Um, so it's a way to keep the best talents in Europe or to repatriate them uh, to Europe. Secondly, it's important to invest in frontier research because the big discoveries in the history of uh, human beings, they, never, they, are, they were never planned in advance. You have to plant the seeds all over and then the flowers will, uh, will come. Uh, you have to, to invest with a high percentage of risk, but those projects that will work can really make a difference and we have a great examples from, from the history of science of uh, from internet to x-ray to infrared uh, um, big discoveries that were done in basic research with no immediate application but after a while there was the application and the great application so it's very important for society if we don't invest in this frontier research can we effectively compete with uh, america with asia it's uh, very hard to compete because these countries are investing massive amounts of money they also give very good uh, conditions, working conditions for researchers. They help the families, they give uh, long-term career perspectives. So Europe is lagging behind somewhere because we can be more competitive. We should do more to attract the best. And uh, if we don't, uh, of course, the best people will, will leave, as it happened already partially. How do we get them back? What, what is it that we say to them to come back to Europe and do this research? We say, if you get a grant, you have a five years project that you can run in any European university or research center that you can choose. Uh, for five years, you can recruit people. You can have almost 2 million euros or 1.5 or 2 million euros. So you have financial autonomy, you have scientific freedom, you run the project, you manage the money, you choose the team members, and uh, if you're not happy with the institution hosting you, you can change. You can move from one country to another, or within the same country from one place to another. So total freedom, and uh, this is why to get an ERC grant has become a really a, a label of excellence and a label of a very high level. It sounds that you're treating the researchers more like entrepreneurs than students, is that right? You have to manage funds, that's the big difference. So, of course, you have to understand how the investment works, how you, you allocate the money among the different uh, parts of the project, and you have to be risky as an entrepreneur. Uh, science is more and more about risk, high risk, high gain, this is our slogan. And uh, if you don't succeed, still you have a good experience, because science advances also by mistakes. If you, if you succeed, then you can really make a big, uh, big difference. Are there particular sectors which you think will produce greater fruit than others? 
there are so many sectors which are promising and where we see already the fruits of our investment. We see the 3D printing, we see the graphene, a new material, we see uh, nanotechnology, new materials, um, medicine, a lot of interesting discoveries, a lot of interesting projects. And uh, the beauty of this program is that we do not set priorities. We leave completely the curiosity of the researchers to propose a project and to go in any direction. It's like a market approach then. Do you partner with industry as a means of exploring new technologies but also getting this research into the marketplace? We start to work more and more with industry in the sense that we have, for example, a small part of our budget which goes in a proof of concept call, which is a specific action aiming at exploring the marketability of the idea. So bridging the gap between basic research and application. And uh, we show these projects to industry. We work with uh, magazines, with uh, business. We try to give them a big, uh, a big visibility. And it works. We, still, we, we start to see a lot of uh, proof of concept ERC projects uh, taken by, by the industry and establishing new partnerships. When we look at all the initiatives to create employment in Europe, where does the ERC fit in this? The ERC has a direct and an indirect link to the growth and jobs because, first of all, with an ERC grant, of course the researchers get a, a big project and can still work in Europe, but also he or she can recruit five, six or seven uh, young researchers, assistants or even PhD students in the project. So there is an immediate effect on the job creation. And in the long term, of course, the discoveries and science can get an application, can become industry, can become patents, and that will be a very, uh, very strong leverage effect, but this is for the long term. Okay, is it difficult to convince politicians to take this long term view? Science is something that only works in the long term. Um, as in any context, you have people who fully uh, embrace this, uh, this view and other people more reluctant. And uh, the good news is that for the Horizon 2020 budget, which is our umbrella, um, the politicians, the European politicians, which, uh, who are the Europe members of the European Parliament, they took a very strong view to increase the budget for research. So there was a long-term vision, there was a strong commitment to get to increase the budget and to put money into that. The final decision taken by heads of state uh, also was lower than the, the parliament proposal. So you see that there are different, uh, different components, but we are optimistic because I think more and more public opinion and policymakers understand the value of uh, science. Is there a new generation of scientists within Europe who are more ambitious, who are more focused on uh, producing marketable products? There is a very strong and very wide generation of scientists in Europe from every European country. The difficulty is, the, is that in some countries they find the working conditions, the opportunities, the career perspectives to stay and to embark and to risk. In other countries this situation is different and they can find it difficult to, uh, to keep on, uh, on this career or to, um, to go on with, with research projects. So it's, um, it's again a question of entrepreneurship, but it's also a question of conditions that should be provided to them. And this is very varied within, uh, within Europe. Yes. Is the ERC itself ambitious? Does it have a, a driving mentality to achieve and to achieve, uh, which is different than you might expect from a bureaucracy, from, from a government organization? So it's not a program led by institutions or politicians but the scientists wanted an organization led by scientists and this is the, the ERC. So uh, what is the consequence? That first of all there is a, a, a common language between uh, all the parties and all the actors of the organization and secondly there is this bottom-up approach, no thematic priority decided by the top and uh, also the high level of the panelists. This is really the the key, the key for all, uh, all this. And scientists like this. It's a program which is very simple. The bureaucracy is very light. Um, the design is very simple. It's one researcher with one institution, one idea, and one selection criterion, which is excellence. So very easy and non-bureaucratic. ERC participated really closely with TEDx in Brussels recently. 
What was the outcome of that and why did you participate in the first place? One of our big challenges now uh, is to show the ERC outside the scientific community because now in universities, in the research, uh, in the world of research, uh, in Europe everyone knows the European Research Council. But outside this world, this is still not known enough. And I think every people knowing the National Research Council should also know that there is a European Research Council working at European level and putting in competition all the best, uh, the best talents. And uh, this is why we try to embark in new communication activities to go out and TEDx is a great opportunity to, to show to young people and to be online, to be seen uh, with a multiplier effect uh, all over the world and we have a lot of speakers to provide and a lot of uh, uh, interesting projects to show. So we tried and I think it was a good, uh, a good idea. What were the highlights uh, for you from TEDx with the ERC? Well, we had the five, uh, five researchers um, that were chosen by the TEDx uh, itself under, after a proposal from our side. We had a Nobel Prize, <coughs> a Nobel Prize in Economics, uh, Professor Pisarides, and we had uh, uh, four projects run by rather young researchers, very interesting, from uh, tsunami management to uh, graphene. So uh, I think all of them were extremely interesting and we had very good feedback from all participants about the five of them. One of them was to do with invisibility. Uh, is, it, is this the kind of uh, technology which catches the imagination which you, you need to present to gain a, a wider public audience? This is exactly one of the, of the interesting projects for a general public. Technologically or scientifically speaking, we have a lot of other projects, but this was very interesting and very, very sexy for a, for a non-specialized audience. So uh, invisibility, we don't know if it will work, but certainly there are already some uh, progress as it was showed in the, in the TEDx. Finally, in terms of junior education, high schools and primary schools as well, does the ERC have an educational role to play in encouraging people to get into science? Not yet, <clears throat> at least not yet directly, but um, we hope that there is an, an indirect effect with the role model that many of these scientists are assuming. And one of the key challenges for us is to help Europeans, uh, to help European women to be more active in science and to embark in, in research career, because still we are lagging behind uh, what it should be in this respect. So we hope that with uh, the examples of great women scientists, there will be at school and in higher education more uh, women and more girls attracted by this career. How many researchers are involved in these projects? In these first years of the organization we have funded 4,500 top researchers and 26,000 uh, team members, so another set of young researchers. In impressive numbers, very interesting, but still growing because every year we fund an additional 1,000 uh, researchers plus the team. So we have a good uh, effect also in the, in the job market. And you fund about 10,000 postdoc researchers as well. That's a substantial number. That's uh, very substantial. And these are people that one day will apply to become principal investigators, to become real beneficiaries of the grant. So we can have a multiplier effect and, uh, and a very promising uh, scenario. Yes. Do you think that the system itself gets more effective as uh, these younger researchers uh, mature? Yes, because they learn by doing. Um, by definition and uh, they see how the principal investigator, the big uh, researcher works, they can get the inspiration, they can apply themselves and these things is already happening. So uh, we also try to encourage the old uh, uh, senior scientists to uh, stimulate and to facilitate the career of the youngest and this is a criterion to get a grant also for the senior scientists. So we try to Fa facilitate the emanci emancipation of, uh, of the young scientists. Merci, thank you.